Welcome back to another edition of the Hammer HQ Bracket Challenge here on the Hit the Books channel. We are joined here by TA from Cleve Analytics. You can find uh, insights into the college basketball tournament on that website. You might know TA from the Forward Progress podcast that he did for the NFL during this season. But uh, TA, how excited are you right now for the March Madness tournament? Oh, I love it. It's like my favorite time of the year. And it's funny because I used to be, I, I'm a basketball junkie in general. I've played, it's the one sport I've played my whole life. I still play it uh, in leagues as I'm in my 40s. But um, I will be honest, this is probably the first season that I've watched and cared about uh, basketball, you know, college basketball at the least. So I, I haven't really paid much attention to the teams and the players until about, you know, I got back into it about two, three weeks ago once NFL season was done and we started getting into March. I kind of get, got back into gear. So um, it's it's exciting, even if you don't know all the teams and players, just kind of um, going through their bracket. And, um, you know, the, the the general game theory, I think, is pretty interesting and pretty fun. And obviously mix it in with, uh, you know, you got St. Paddy's Day on Friday to watch the games. And, you know, there's a lot of fun stuff going on. So it, it's a good time of year. Well, I got to ask you quickly then, uh, what happened this year? Why was this year the down year for watching and following along? And then, I mean, part B of that question does this uh, affect anything for you? Has it changed anything for you going into March Madness this year in terms of preparation? Yeah, so it's more personal. I just I um, got married a couple of years ago, started having kids. Uh, you know, I've got one daughter and I've got a, a second so one life. on the way. <laughs> yeah, so life just got in the way. And I'll just be honest, you know, I've, I've been doing more in the NFL, um, but obviously with my website and just just I just kind of continue to, to, to add more to my site and just in general, you know, more uh, the combine, the draft, free agency, it's just like nonstop. So to really sit down and, and focus on college basketball is a difficult. And, you know, again, once you start having a family, I mean, back in the day, I used to be able to, to mix in college basketball in December and January, and I just can't do it anymore. I have to give, I have to give time to my family uh, on those off nights. So I kind of had to pick and choose. And, and I just think in general too, you know, just there's n no real star power right now in college right. basketball, unfortunately. Um, and so it, it's just hard to be attracted to, you know, guys like, you know, Edie at Purdue. Like we're talking about the best player in the country is a seven foot, you know, old school seven foot center. It's like, you know, that that was a little bit, um, you know, uh, not really attractive from a from a viewing standpoint. So it, it took a little bit longer than normal. But, you know, I feel like I've crammed things in um, in the last couple of weeks and, uh, read up a lot. And so I, I know these teams better, obviously, than I did a couple of weeks ago. But uh, right. clearly, you know, not the same as it was a handful of years ago before uh, before you know life got in the way, if you will. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, so we're about to fill out your bracket here. And if you want to compete against TA and our other creators brackets, you can join the Hammer HQ bracket challenge. You can find the link to that in the description. Sign up there. The winner, I believe top three winners actually get bet stamp prize packs merchandise packs from the guys over at bet stamp so if you want to sign up and compete make sure to do that with the link in the description but ta to set the stage before we get into your bracket here quickly what is your strategy especially as a better and how do you incorporate your betting into your march madness brackets we've heard different guys come on here and talk about leveraging situations how they vary between pool size their competition in the pool what is the way that you approach your march madness brackets yeah it's a great question and, and this is like why I, I think it's so fun because i am you know big into game theory and and all those things and i think a lot of i'm, I'm assuming a lot of the people that you add on who are you know betters and, and do this for a living? Yeah, th that's what they enjoy. So I, I like the fact that you know it's it's got strategy. It's not just picking the best teams. It's there, there's other things that are involved in. Like you said, it depends on the size of the pool. So that's the first thing that anybody out there should should pay attention to is you know are you in a small pool? Are you in a pool that's got less than you know 20, 30 guys in it that um, you know you don't have to be uh, you don't have to take nearly as many risks. You can go chalky and be okay. Um, or are you in a pool that's got you know 100 plus where uh, you, you really have to take some t take some shots, take some upsets, but at the same time don't be reckless, right? I think that's a big key is just because you're in a large pool and you have to be contrarian doesn't mean you have to start taking 16 seeds over ones or you know just having you know all eight seeds in the final four. Like you still have to you know adhere to what you know history has told us about the tournament. Uh, you know we've had at least one uh, number one seed in, in in 40 straight elite eights so it's like you know those things you have to keep in mind that that even though you want to pick some upsets you don't want to go overboard 
Um, when you look at some upsets, uh, to be contrarian, for example, try to find teams it, it, that you don't think um, are going to go far anyway. So you can take a 14 over a 3 or a 12 over a 5. If, if that team that, that is getting upset, you don't really have going far or the betting markets don't have going far anyway, you can, you can afford to take that upset. But don't do that for like an Alabama or a Houston in, in round one, right? Because those teams are clearly the two top teams. And if you if, even if you get it right, it's probably not worth that risk. So, you know, just be measured uh, in that way. Uh, so I think that, you know, the size of the pool and, and the, the strategy from that perspective is important. Um, and then, you know, one thing I do is I look at all of the, the ESPN, the CBS, um, those sorts of things, even like the betting, um, some of those betting uh, sites when it comes to public percentages, all those things that, you know, I know Rob would, would, would make fun of and I totally get from a betting perspective. But from a pool perspective, it's it's actually good information yeah. to know, you know, because that's how you, you become contrarian is what is kind of the wisdom of the crowds. You know, that's wisdom of the crowds works um, in a positive manner for some things, but it's not NCAA tournament that the crowd does not know the NCAA tournament and is not good at picking upsets and those sorts of things. So go to, you can go to ESPN. They have like the people's bracket and see who everybody is picking when it comes to either round one or the sweet 16, or even the final four and the championship compare that to the, to the odds, uh, the betting odds, when it comes to you know uh, winning the title and the betting markets, you can see you can convert that the the probability um, you know from the odds to see kind of what percentage uh, the markets think that a team will win it all, and look at what uh, you know ESPN and CBS et cetera have uh, from kind of America standpoint. And if there are any that are off significantly, that's where you can really um, you know make your your contrarian picks um, from that regard. So right. I think that's important um, to to keep in mind, especially in the larger pools. So um, those are a couple of things that I do. And then from a betting perspective, I, I look at the, the, you know, that's how I approach it from, you know, from a bracket perspective. And I use some of the betting market and numbers and odds to do that from my pure personal betting standpoint. You know, I kind of keep those separate from the bracket. Like to me, the brackets are kind of one investment. You know, I do a couple big pools um, where there's, you know, real money on the line. And I kind of keep that separate from my pure game to game uh, betting st uh, strategy. Um, you know, there are times where I'll have a, a, in one bracket, you know, a sweet 16, you know, upset. But then I when it actually comes down to the game and I dissect the matchup and I get a little bit, um, you know, uh, uh, do a little bit more work. You know, I actually like the favorite. So um, I don't always go with what my original bracket um, uh, pick was. So it, it depends. And then if you get to the final four um, or the, the championship and you have a bracket that's, you know, doing really well, you can use maybe some of your personal bets to, to hedge a little bit or even middle um, if there's really, um, you know, uh, decent money on the line here. So right. um, that's, that's essentially how I look at it. All right. Sounds good. Well, I'm excited to go through this. Uh, let's get to filling out your bracket. And again, just want to remind people, if you do want to compete against TA's bracket here, you can join the Hammer Bracket Challenge. The link to join is in the description. But without further ado, let's get started here. So the floor is yours, TA. Where are we going first? And uh, let's let's run through this. Yeah, so I guess we're starting in the South region. Um, so, you know, uh, obviously, Advance Alabama, that's an easy one. They're, they're to, to me, the best team in the country. So um, you'll see you'll have them going far. Uh, I'm going to take Maryland in the next game in the 8-9 matchup over West Virginia. To me, it's a toss-up. And that just comes down to some of the things that West Virginia really relies on, uh, you know, creating turnovers, offensive rebounds. Maryland actually does a really good job of protecting the basketball and preventing, um, you know, offensive rebounds on the other side. And I think, you know, just looking at some of the consensus numbers, a lot of people are on West Virginia. So it's a little bit of a, uh, you know, contrarian pick for me. So uh, I like, I like Maryland there. The next two are pretty tough. Like those are uh, the San Diego state Charleston and Virginia Furman games are games that are very um, I think trendy from a, from a, a public perception on the dog. So uh, I think I need to uh, not just – I think I need to stick with, with the higher seeds there. So I'm going to go San Diego State and Virginia. I'm going to buck the, the trendy dogs there. Uh, obviously, a lot of people are fading the Mountain West, and I get it. But um, for this purpose, I, I'm just going to I'm just going to advance the uh, advance the favorites. Don't love either one, but you know, just, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know if those – those higher seeded teams, the, the Charleston and Furman's really uh, the way they match up looking at some of the numbers don't necessarily um, favor them in these games. So 
Uh, and the next game, I like Creighton over NC State. I have Creighton as my lone um, uh, championship ticket from uh, about a month ago. They are really uh, – they're a Ken Palm darling compared to their their seed. They're, they're under-seeded based on uh, some of the advanced metrics. So I do like Creighton. Uh, the next uh, team, I'll take Baylor over UC Santa Barbara. Um, I like uh, the Missouri Utah State. Another toss up. I'll take Missouri. Don't love that one, but um, you know, to me, um, you know, fading the Mountain West a little bit is okay there. Utah State really hasn't. They're not very athletic, so uh, I'll take Missouri from the Big Conference, and I'll take Arizona, uh, obviously, to win against Princeton. So you can see I'm <laughs> pretty chalky so far, but I'm okay <laughs> with that because there'll be uh, upsets uh, in, in other areas. Uh, Alabama, Maryland. I do like Alabama again. I think they're the best team. I think they're the most well-rounded, um, play great defense and have a ton of skill guys on offense. So I think they'll overwhelm Maryland there, you know, San Diego state, Virginia, like here's where, like, to me, I think Charleston has a better shot of upsetting San Diego state than Furman does against Virginia. So I don't want to advance San Diego state here because I think, um, of the two, I think Charleston has a better shot to, to pull the upset. So I'll advance Virginia just kind of uh, at the fall. But I don't like either team. It's just a horrible, horrible side of the bracket. Uh, the next uh, game, uh, Creighton Baylor. I like Creighton. That's that's going to be an upset for me. Again, I, I think Creighton uh, is underseeded. I'll talk about Baylor along with some other teams. There are four teams, and again, on my website, I talk about this. Um, there's a trend historically, uh, and I only I've only gone back 11 years, or sorry, since 2011. So uh, about uh, 11 years here where uh, teams that have really good offensive st statistical profiles, so top 25 raw points per possession on offense, um, but have really poor defensive metrics, so uh, 150th or worse in defense from a raw points per possession standpoint, and you're a high seed, so you're a top six seed. Those teams, there's never been a team uh, in the last 11 years that have made the final four. There's been eight upsets um, you know, in, uh, with those teams, um, uh, early on uh, to double digit seeds. So there's a ton of reasons for me, uh, to fade Baylor here. So I'm going to do that uh, with Creighton Interesting. and then next game, Missouri, Arizona, I like Arizona. I think they're, they're a much better team here, um, than, than, uh, than Missouri. So again, not, pretty much chalk except for the Creighton pick, but I'll take Alabama to, to beat uh, Virginia. I think that will be a, that could be a blowout. Um, and then I like Creighton to upset Arizona. Again, that's my team, Creighton. I'm, I'm pushing them forward here. I think they're a team that can cause some noise. But in the end, I think Alabama over Creighton uh, uh, to get to the Final Four. It's too bad. I wish Creighton was – I think if Creighton was in any other region, I would have them in the Final Four. But because I, I think Alabama is by far the, the strongest team, uh, I'll stick with Alabama. Interesting. Um, so there you go. Alabama, first team through to the Final Four. Real shocking, right? I'm sure I'm the only one. <laughs> <laughs> um, like I said, I promise I'll get a little, little more, uh, uh, get more, some more upsets. So I guess we're, are we going to the Midwest next? Uh, yeah, let's go to the Houston Midwest. Tonight. Okay. Yeah. So Houston will advance. Um, obviously for them, I like them a lot. Uh, they're probably the second best team in the country, but the Sasser injury is really big. I'll, I'll be curious to see if he plays against Northern Kentucky. They'll probably sit him just to at least give him another, uh, uh couple days to rest that groin. But that's, that's obviously something to keep an eye on. Uh, and, and my picks would change if he was out by, for, you know, uh, going forward. But we'll just assume he'll be playing. The next game, Iowa Auburn, is a is a toss up. I think you know again from some of the so betting numbers and some of the um, consensus numbers, a lot of people are on Auburn. So I don't really think they do anything well. They're a terrible offensive team. Um, so I'll go with Iowa because I think they can they can outscore them. So we'll, we'll take Iowa there. Miami Drake. Okay, so here's an upset. I like Drake. Uh, again, Miami fits that same as Baylor. They're probably the worst um, defensive team in the country amongst the top seeds. I think they're like 202nd in raw points per possession. So this they are ripe for an upset. There's a reason why this is only a two-point spread. Uh, it's kind of – everybody's figured this out, but um, I, I don't like Miami there. And their big man uh, is likely out as well, which is a big loss. So uh, Drake should be able to, to get to the basket at will against that defense. And I also like Kent State over Indiana. Uh, again, maybe it's my local bias here being in Cleveland, Kent State, my wife's alma mater. Um, but they've got a really good guard, Sincere Carey, who uh, who can carry them far. Um, he, he's, he's probably the best player in the MAC. A really good, really good team. They in the in the non conference, they almost beat both Gonzaga and Houston. I think they lost to Houston by one and Gonzaga by five. So this team is legit. 
So I really like Kent State there. Uh, Iowa State, Pittsburgh. I'm going to advance Pittsburgh. Uh, just one last night. Uh, again, don't be afraid to advance these play-in teams. Uh, I think 10 of the last 11 tournaments, one of the play-in, you know, the non-16 seed play-in teams has advanced uh, past the first round, and a bunch of them have gotten to the Sweet 16 and even the Final Four. So, um, you know, Iowa State, really good defensive team. Pittsburgh can make some shots. It could be a similar game to the Mississippi State game last night where Mississippi State plays really good defense, but they have no offense at all. So it could be a similar game there. So I like Pittsburgh. I'll go Xavier the next game over Kennesaw State. And then, you know, Texas A&M, Penn State, again, toss up. I'll go with Penn State. They match up well from a um, a perspective where A&M likes to turn you over um, with their pressure defense. Penn State does not turn the ball over a lot. One of the best teams in the country in turnover rate. And they're very good three-point shooting team. And A&M allows some of the highest three-point rates in the country. So I think it's a bad matchup for A&M. I think if Penn State hits a couple shots from outside, they'll be good. And then I'll take Texas over Colgate. Texas winning the, the Big 12, pretty hot. Uh, at the top, I like Houston over Iowa. Uh, I think Iowa's just got too many flaws. They're, they're an up-and-down team. But Houston, as long as Sasser's okay, I like them to advance. Drake, Kent State, really interesting game. I'm going to go Kent State. I think that their their guard play with Sincere Carey will get them there. They've had a run in the past, um, and the MAC is an underrated conference. So uh, I, think, I think Kent State can, can advance to the Sweet 16. Pittsburgh, Xavier, I'm going to go Pittsburgh. Uh, interesting old Sean Miller uh, reunion. Um, Pittsburgh, again, as I mentioned with uh, with uh, Baylor and Miami, Xavier fits the bill as one of these, these higher-seeded teams. Great on offense, terrible on defense. Um, historically, these teams get upset early, and I think Pitt is is ripe to, to take them down because of their offense. And then Penn State, Texas, good game, but I'll go with Texas. I think just a better overall team um, over Penn State. And then Houston. So this is okay. So the other one, the, the, the South was chalky, and the Midwest have been pretty, pretty good with upsets. <laughs> I like I like Houston here over Kent State. Obviously, good run by Kent State, but I, I can't take them past the, this round. And then I'll take uh, Texas um, over Pittsburgh. Okay. And then um, I'm going to go with Texas here over Houston. A little bit of an upset, just because I'm hedging my bet that Sasser is not 100 percent and. Uh, I just, you know, I just remember Houston just struggles to really score unless they get a bunch of offensive rebounds. And um, I, I think against a big school like Texas, who has proven to, um, you know, uh, winning the Big 12, that uh, they got a run in them. So I like what they're uh, what they've been about recently and all their metrics look good. So uh, Alabama and Texas so far in the final four. All right. There you go. Now let's head on over to the East region. OK, with the East, I'll go Purdue, obviously. Um, the next game, Memphis FAU, really fun game. Uh, the, the, this is where there's a mismatch between the, 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 uh, betting odds where Memphis is a two point favorite. You look at some of the Ken Palm metrics, FAU is ranked really high. This is essentially a, a, a coin flip, but you look at some of the ESPN bracket uh, numbers and I think Memphis is like a 65%, uh, uh, pick rate and they've been hot lately. So this is a risky one, but I'm going to go with FAU just as a contrarian pick in the first round. Um, could come back to bite me because Memphis has the ability to beat Purdue too. But uh, uh, FAU is a really good team. Talked to some folks um, it, who, who uh, work in college basketball and they they played against FAU and said really good things. So um, I'll take them there. I'll go with Duke over Oral Roberts, and it's too bad that Oral Roberts is playing Duke because I like Duke this year, and, and you know you'll see in a minute. Uh, Oral Roberts, I would have beating every other five seed uh, in the tournament except for Duke. It's too bad that they put those two together. Max Abmus is a really fun uh, uh, guard uh, who can score, um, but I think Duke is just too good, especially inside. Tennessee, Louisiana, um, chances could be an upset, but I'm going to go with Tennessee for now. You know, they started off hot, but they lost their starting point guard, Zacchaeus. So that's a that's going to be a killer going forward, but I'll take them over Louisiana. Pretty trendy upset pick, too. Um, but, I'll, but I'll take Tennessee. I'll take Providence over Kentucky. That's going to be a double-digit winner there. I just don't believe in Kentucky, two up and down. Um, they they play a slow pace, and they don't do a good job of turning over the opponent, which is a bad uh, combo if you're a high seed. And I think Providence obviously has the chops to, to, to pull the upset there. I'll take Kansas State uh, over Montana State. Uh, Michigan State, USC is another one similar to some of the other kind of toss-up games where Michigan State's a two-point favorite, but they're getting about 60 to 65% of the consensus uh, picks. 
and I think it's just pure uh, name recognition. Uh, they're not very good. Uh, so I'll go with USC there. Don't love either team, but I'll, I'll take USC over Michigan State and then Marquette over Vermont. Uh, so uh, back up top, I'll take Purdue over FAU, but that's going to be a battle. I'll go with Duke over Tennessee, so a mild upset, but Duke's going to be favored in that one. So um, it won't end up being a, an upset. I'll take Providence over Kansas State. Um, just, again, a little bit of an upset there. Kansas State has been vulnerable. They lost in the first round of their tournament. Um, they haven't been playing great lately. And then I'll take Marquette over USC. Um, don't have much to say about USC. Marquette's played really well. Um, Shaka Smart's done a good job there. I'll go with Duke over Purdue. That's going to be my upset on that side of the bracket. Uh, I just don't believe in Purdue, and Duke's got the size to handle Edie. Uh, Duke has been for the you know early in the season they struggled, but in the last uh, I think since February first, they're seventh in Bartovic's rate, uh, ratings. So they're they're a top ten team. They're just you know it it, it took a while, but uh, this is a, currently a top ten team. So they're not really a five seed. They're more like a two seed. Um, but, uh, but I like them. They'll probably, they have a shot to be favored over Purdue as well. That'll be interesting what the line would be in that one. Uh, but that's, you know, that's a close one. And then I'll take Marquette over Providence in a, in a, uh, a, a big East matchup, old big East matchup. And then we got Duke Marquette. I'm going to go with Duke to advance to the final four. I think they, again, I think that they're playing really hot. Uh, they're playing really well. Um, Lively's playing well. And I think that's, uh, um, that's a good contrarian play. I, it's, it's weird to call Duke a contrarian play, but for your brackets out there, they're good enough to win this whole thing. And as the five seed, most people won't, won't get them in there. So um, so I like them to advance the final four. All right, heading over to the West to finish this one out and send the final team to the final four. Yeah, I'll go with Kansas over Howard. Um, I'll go with Illinois over Arkansas, but that one I, just, I don't really have a great feel um, Illinois is good enough. Illinois has got a couple of top five wins, so they're good enough to beat anybody. Uh, they're up and down. Uh, Arkansas is underseeded based on some of the uh, Ken Palm metrics. Uh, they've been unlucky. They play a lot of close games. But again, that's just one where everybody, I think like 70% of the people are taking Arkansas, and that should be more of a coin flip. So I'm just going to go a little contrary in there with Illinois. Um, St. Mary's VCU is um, another potential. Um, a trendy pick, but I, I like VCU. I think that they um, they do enough. They'll do enough to bother St. Mary's. They're hot. Um, they'll turn them over. And v, you know, St. Mary's is going to try to play slow, and VCU is going to try to um, go up tempo. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there. But I just don't believe in St. Mary's. I'll go UConn over Iona uh, with, against Rick Pitino. It'll be a fun matchup. The TCU uh, Arizona State Nevada game. I'll go TCU. Um, TCU's got is good enough to to you know, get to the final four, but um, for now I'll take them here in that first matchup and then Gonzaga over Grand Canyon. I'll go with Boise over Northwestern. Again, another Mountain West. Everyone's fading the Mountain West, which, you know, maybe I'll look stupid, but, uh, you know, I don't know if one year has anything to do with the other. I know they've lost a bunch in a row, but um, I don't believe in Northwestern and Boise has got some good players there. Um, and again, another one where uh, the, the game's essentially a coin flip and a lot of people are taking Northwestern. So slight contrarian play there. And I'll go with UCLA over Asheville. And then up top, I'm going to take Illinois here um, over Kansas uh, for an upset. Um, Kansas to me, yeah. So so I uh, on my site, you'll see I profile. I've gone back. I've been doing this for over 20 years, looking at um, you know the different profiles of teams that win national championships. And Kansas – does not fit the bill this year. Surpri I know it might be a surprise, um, but when you look historically, you know, title contenders usually um, are, you know, I, I run through it, but essentially Kansas is 109th in the country in raw points per possession on offense, and no team has won the title. Um, and going back to 2002, uh, that's been worse than 81st, and that was, that was an outlier. That was UConn in 2014 with Shabazz Napier. I mean, in general, they're, you're usually a top 45 offense, um, 81st was an outlier. So for Kansas to get to, to win the title at 109th, I think is a stretch. So that's where I'm going to, um, use some of the historical trends here. Um, you know, Bill self may not coach. He had a, he had a couple stents <laughs> inserted. So, you know, there's a lot of, a uh, lot of things in flux here and, you know, I'm not sure that, um, they've got the chops to get to the final four. So I'll pull my upset here with Illinois VCU, UConn. I'll take UConn. I think UConn's underseeded, and they could have easily been a top two seed based on uh, some of the advanced metrics. TCU, Gonzaga. 
So everyone loves Gonzaga this year. And again, they fall into that. They're the fourth team that falls into the, that call the empty suits, the, just like Miami, Xavier, and Baylor. Great offense, really, really poor defense. This is not the same Gonzaga team we've seen in the past. Um, they are ripe for an upset. So I'm going to go with TCU here as a, another upset um, over Gonzaga. They're good. I mean, TCU has won a lot of good, they've been a lot of good teams in the best conference in the country. So going up with Gonzaga is not going to be an issue. Uh, they're not going to be intimidated. So um, I'll take TCU there. And then UCLA over Boise. Um, I like UCLA a lot. It's too bad they're Jalen Clark, their their best winged uh, defender, um, player of the year defensively in the Pac-12 is out with the torn Achilles. It's too bad, um, but they're still good enough, I think, to advance. So I'll go Illinois, UConn. I'll take UConn there. Again, I think it's a they an underseated team. Um, the advanced metrics love them. Um, not everyone, you know, not a lot of people are picking them to advance. So I think that's a good one there. And then I'll go with UCLA over UConn. Or sorry, UCLA over TCU. Sorry. And then I'll go with um, I'll go with UCLA over UConn. Just um, a slight contrarian play. Um, I think a lot of people have Gonzaga. So um, I know UCLA isn't as good as some of their numbers say because of uh, the uh, the injuries, but I, I like them here. All right, so now down to our final four. We have Alabama against Duke, the one versus five. And then on the other side, we have Texas against UCLA, two two uh, seeds. Who is going to the national championship? So I'm going to take Alabama um, to beat um, Texas in the championship. All right. Um, and really, comes down, yeah, and it comes down to, for me, Texas just has an easy path. Um, I, they don't really face anybody that, that scares me except for maybe Houston, who may not have a healthy uh, sasser till you, till you get to the final four. And UCLA has got an injury. So I, I think, you know, and I think the West, you know, although it's loaded, um, they're at the top. There's, you know, I think there's some flawed teams. So um, I like Alabama to, to win it all. Again, it won't be that contrarian. I, I have a lot of contrarian picks otherwise, but I just think Alabama is the most well-rounded team. Every other team has flaws or there's some sort of histor- you know, historical – um, you know, neg- negative flaw that that you know historically these teams don't uh, win the title. So Alabama is the only one that really fits everything. Um, they've got NBA players. They've got a top five defense. Um, they can score. So uh, to me, that's the safest pick. And then for the score, I'll go seventy-seven, seventy-two, Alabama. All right, there you have it. The national champion in TA's twenty twenty-three March Madness bracket. Alabama defeating Texas in the final 77-72. TA, thank you so much for taking the time to do this today. If you do want to compete against TA's bracket, make sure to click the link in the description to go over and compete in the Hammer HQ bracket challenge for 2023. But thank you for taking the time today, TA. You can see all of this stuff over at uh, cleveanalytics.com. I'll put the link beside his name in the description of this video. Good luck on your bets in March Madness, and good luck on your bracket this year. Thanks, Zach.